Hello and welcome back to the port, I'm the Gav Major and this is a review of the TFI British Heavy Cruiser HMS Devonshire available as early access and will be fully researchable from March 2021 onwards. Now HMS Devonshire is a county class heavy cruiser of the London subclass and she was commissioned in 1929. During World War II one of her most notable acts was that she carried the Norwegian royal family from Norway to Britain following the German invasion of Norway. Now if you would like uh, some more information regarding the county class heavy cruisers then Dracov now has done one of his 5 minute guides and that will be carded top right now but also available on the end screen and that is 8 minutes and 42 seconds long. Now from the shipping forecast this is a tier 4 and 5 game of capture the base on Haven on the enemy team we have a Minikaze, a Kuma, a Hawkins, a Hawkins and Emerald, Omaha, Aoba, Devonshire and Arizona only the one battleship which is favourable situations for the uh, Devonshire I guess you could say. So, in comparison to the Tech Tree Cruisers, uh, she does have the second highest HP base of 34,400. She's also got the highest HP pool of 43,976, thanks to the two repair parties that she comes equipped with. Obviously this is all subject to change uh, based on your commander skills and inspirations. Now when it comes to her torpedo reduction, she does have the highest torpedo reduction which is 23%. Uh, however when it comes to the armour she is very thin. Um, one of the reasons why you usually do get concerned about battleships. Uh, but for the best way to look at the armour is always to go back to the port and have a look at the armour viewer. So here we are back at the port, looking at the armour of the Devonshire. Well first of all let's start off with the bow and the stern. It is only really made up of 16mm plating which is only sufficient to ricochet 8 inch AP rounds. So um, up against maybe a friend, uh, enemy cruisers, uh, like normal cruisers, then you'll be able to probably bow and stern tank them if you need to. Um, just bear in mind that as you open up they're going to be able to punch through it. Uh, so almost if you do open up to try and bring all your guns onto target they're going to be able to punch through your bow and your stern and get some damage on your ship in that manner so it's worth almost thinking if you're going up against a cruiser you almost want to stay nose on if you can because if they do punch through your nose um, then the upper plate of your auxiliary room is only uh, 19 millimeters so I mean if you open up they could possibly punch into that also note that your turret barbettes are actually quite thin as well now your superstructure is made up of the usual thin 13mm plating so um, just HE is going to really hurt on your superstructure. Now going back to those turrets, uh, yeah we mentioned the barbettes are actually quite thin and so is the actual turret facings and side armour and stuff. Um, it's only capable of ricocheting um, up to 14 inch guns so 15 inch guns will be easily able to destroy your turrets but also um, it's only 25mm thick which in normal reality that's only really splinter proof so these turrets are actually quite thin and quite fragile and probably quite easy to knock out even with 8 inch HE. Um, it's going off my personal experience when playing the Exeter and the London. Um, tucking those away obviously we do have a big freeboard and we do have this auxiliary room at the top. Now the side of that auxiliary room is 25 millimeters which does mean that you can angle it against 14 inch guns however you have to bear in mind you obviously do have that very thin nose and that very thin plating behind the nose which means that if they don't hit your side and they hit your nose instead then they're going to go straight through that nose and into that auxiliary room. Now amusingly, actually continuing with that midsection, you do have a 27mm thick deck which is enough to ricochet 15 inch guns. So at long range, uh, 15 inch guns could possibly skip off the deck. Um, interesting concept. Um, not necessarily sure I want to try it but um, it's something worth mentioning I guess you could say. Now going on to the Sistel, obviously it is partially above water um, now it is quite obviously quite thick you are looking at um, the side of it is, I do apologize, uh, 114 millimeters so it's alright, the problem is that there's not a lot of it above the water line so you can't exactly use it to bounce any shells but it is above the water line so that is a bit of a downside and it is in comparison to the overall side of the ship I guess you could say it's small um, but 
then again it is quite visible and you have to be cautious of say AP shells arming along the length of your ship especially from battleships so I think in general with the uh, Devonshire battleships are definitely going to be the big scary things that you're going to want to try and avoid however up against cruisers they can still hurt you as well um, these cruisers very much seem like opportunistic cruisers uh, using what range and concealment they have to their advantage and usually playing from behind other members of their team at least that's how I'm going to be playing them. In. So, anyway, let's uh, go back into the game and see how we're doing. Welcome back to the game. So, moving on to the artillery. You have eight 8 inch guns in four dual, dual gun turrets. You have A turret, B turret super firing forward, then you have um, Y turret, X turret super firing at the rear, which is uh, quite nice. Um, Arizona. I just need to keep angled, really. I can't dodge just at this range. Okay, frankly, that didn't hurt too much. We can now turn away and uh, lick our wounds, I guess you could say. Continuing with the artillery, you do have the second shortest range of 14.3 kilometers. You have the second slowest reload of 14 seconds. But you do have the second fastest turret traverse speed of 20 seconds per 180 degrees of rotation. When it comes to the shells, you do have the joint highest HE shell damage of 3,300 each. You also have the joint highest fire chance of 17%. You also have an above average AP shell damage. However, due to that reload, your HE and AP DPM aren't that impressive, uh, but if you take it into comparison with the other 8-inch cruisers of the tier, the Pensacola, the Aoba and the Trento, then you do have quite reasonable DPMs. And that's the same story with the fires per minute, you're not too amazing when you're in comparison to all the cruisers, but when you do in comparison against the heavy cruisers only, then things do look a bit better. It's also worth mentioning that you do have a superior high explosive penetration trait, uh, apparently. Whether or not this is actually true, is it's hard to tell, I guess. Mm, Arizona's fired, got to keep angled. Gonna put on the uh, sonar now, I think. Just in case. However, it looks like those torpedoes went that way. Now, that has everything to do with the guns, so let's go on to the torpedoes. Well, first of all, it's worth mentioning that you do have quite nice torpedo angles, and you do have that uh, British trait of sequentially being able to launch your torpedoes, which is quite nice. Now, when it comes to your torpedoes, you do have two quadruple launchers, and one per side, and these are exactly the same as the Leander in pretty much every respect. So you do have a 96 second reload time on your launchers which is a bit above average I guess you could say however you do have a below average uh, reload speed per tube um, so it all depends uh, which way you want to try and look at your reload speed of your um, torpedoes now regarding your torpedoes you do have an above average uh, damage and you have an average torpedo detectability range and speed now, if we want to go on to the maneuverability, um, it's worth mentioning that you are the second slowest at 31.3 knots. You do have the joint second largest turn circle of 710 meters and an average rudder shift of 7.9 seconds. Going on to concealment, now you do have the hidden trait, uh, however you're only the third best. You have the third best detectability by sea and air, and that's 11.1 kilometers and 6.6 kilometers um, respectively. However, you do have an above average detectability when firing smoke due to the 8 inch guns, and that is 6.1 kilometers. Let's see if we can catch that Omaha as he turns out. Have to see if we can get this uh, A over as well. Enemy cruiser destroyed. Now, 
when it comes to your consumables you do have two repair parties and these will heal 171 hp per second for 28 seconds which means that each repair party should heal somewhere in the region of 4788 obviously i have got three repair parties on this build due to my commander build you also have two sonars um, that is worth noting that there has been a slight stealth buff uh, to sonar ranges um, so in this case uh, now the average well the normal uh, sonar range for detecting ships is four kilometers and the normal for picking up torpedoes is now 2.8 kilometers uh, and in this case you have a 92 second duration and 180 second reload now for my commander I am taking a tenant and his skills are obviously ingenious full speed head belarusius steer clear and fully packed and my inspirations are Muller and Zerlane Baltimore and modules wise I have taken aiming systems and steering gears however that's all down in the description as well now while we are just mopping up this Arizona to secure the win, it's worth uh, mentioning that also down in the description is the email address for the channel if you want to send in any of your own game captures, and there will be a link to Patreon on the end screen. So all in all, I have actually been quite enjoying Devonshire. Um, I might change my command build um, to Bruce Fraser as I've got more used to her. Um, I think the only thing that I'm a little bit regretting I guess uh, for going for the tenant build is the having the ingenious ability is quite nice but I think I'd rather have just a little bit more range because with a fully upgraded Bruce Fraser you can push your range out from 14.3 uh, to 15.7 and sometimes that a little bit more touch and distance is uh, much appreciated in these cruisers apart from that um, I haven't really got any complaints. Uh, obviously, I have specced out for speed and rudder because their maneuverability is also another one of their weak arms. And that's the end of the game, very nice. So, just a nice little game uh, while I'm doing the review, reading out the book, which is always quite nice. Getting myself 66,000 damage in the process of getting 62 hits on target, 2 kills, 1 fire, and 7 citadels. And I also shot down a plane. It's nice to see that AA actually looks a bit more impressive these days following the carrier patch. Uh, going on to team results and coming second on my team, which is fair enough, I'm quite happy with that. Amusingly, it's two Devonshires at the top of our team. And going to the economy tab, obviously, she does have the standard ship service challenge for a tier 5 tech tree cruiser or any tier 5 ship I should say which is about 32,000 credits in this case however I'm able to walk away with a profit of 79,000 credits without premium and 136,000 credits with premium so all in all quite happy with that if you did enjoy this review feel free to give the video a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber I say thank you to everyone who is subscribed and until next time I'm the Gaff Major and back to the port hey hey sail the wave here comes the galloping major Get out of the way there, you fellows. Unless you want me to run you down, I guess this is the life. Now, hey, hey, clear the way. Here comes the gallop.